Right, uh, President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa addressing the nation tonight, and this is as a third wave in South Africa is looming. Let's look at now where we are. Uh, let's look at the stats in graphical form, as we often do with Dr. Ridwan Suleiman uh, from the CSIR. Uh, doctor, thank you for being with us, as always. And let, let's start with the daily infection rate. I, I think we're heading towards around 4,000. That's way off where we were at the high of the uh, second wave or so, 18,000, but, but it's trending upwards. Uh, ju just tell us about the increase that we've seen over the last week or so. Good evening, Francis. Um, yes, you're quite correct. The number of cases that we are seeing across the country continues on that sustained increase that we have seen for the last three to four weeks. Um, the, the past week, we are reporting an average of 3,786 new cases per day across the country. Uh, that figure is up 24% week on week. Um, if we compare this case loading compared to the previous waves, uh, currently the case loading is up to 20% of the second wave's peak. Um, and if we compare to the first wave, remember that peak was lower, it's up to 30% of the first wave's peak. Um, again, it's being driven largely by, by Gauteng, uh, but this increase is sustained um, and um, not quite formally in a third wave according to the, uh, the case threshold, uh, but I think it's now just a matter of semantics. The infection rate has, has risen uh, nationally and across all of the provinces, um, and we do need to to uh, take note of that raise um, in infection rates um, and the third wave is pretty much here for all intents and purposes. All right, so some people won't see the end of that graph because of the translator, but let's keep it up. Um, at, at what infection rate do we enter the, a third wave? Just, just give us the technical definition. So currently, according to the adopted guidelines, the technical definition of case threshold um, is 30% of the previous peak. And so at the peak of the second wave, we, we reported about 19,000 cases. 30% of that is 5,700 uh, cases. Remember, we look at a seven-day average. Um, so currently, we're standing at 3,786, which is 20% of the previous uh, wave's peak. Okay, so, so we're heading there, but let's move now to the provinces, and some are higher than others, some are already in third wave, some are not, uh, but everything is going up. Uh, let's bring up the provinces, the Northern Cape experiencing something it has never experienced before, Doctor, any explanation for that? Yes, so Northern Cape is starting to show some decline over the last week. Um, its uh, seven-day average of cases is down 12% compared to a week ago. Um, the peak of the, the trajectory in Northern Cape uh, was one and a half times its previous peak. Um, so I, I think we need to wait though uh, for at least the next week to confirm this downward trend. We have seen over the last few weeks in the Northern Cape, if you look at that purple line, um, it has gone down for a bit, but then started to increase again. Yeah. Um, so so not quite out of the woods. We need to monitor that for, for another week at least. But, it, but um, if it keeps on coming down, that would mean the Northern Cape has already gone through the, the third wave, the, the peak, and, and, and is coming out of it. Yes, that would be correct. So if we continue to see a sustained decrease um, in that trajectory, it would indicate that it's past its peak. And, and Gauteng, the Free State, the, the Northwest, um, those all count as, as third waves, those spikes. That's correct. So Gauteng's case loading um, now is up to 33% of its second wave peak. Uh, Free State's case loading is up to 88% of its previous peak. And the Northwest is up to 51% of its previous peak. So all of those have surpassed that 30% threshold. So they are formally uh, in their third waves. Um, I think to, to point out there is the sharp rise also that we're seeing in Gauteng. Uh, it's up 35% compared to a week ago. So the seven-day average of, of new cases in Gauteng is about 1,720 new cases per day, about 45% of the total cases that we're seeing across the country. Uh, Free State's increase is still sustained, although slowing down a bit. It's up 15% compared to a week ago. Northwest continues to, to rise also quickly. It's up 34% compared to a week ago. Um, the other two neighboring provinces of Gauteng, that being 
between Mpumalanga and Limpopo are showing signs of increase. And the last notable thing to point out is the Western Cape also showing signs of an increase up 33% compared to a week ago. All right, so everything going up except the, the Northern Cape starting to come down, but we'll see if that's sustainable. Let's look at testing now. If the testing rate is up by 5%, that's what your graph will show, I think, uh, but the infection rate is up more dramatically. Is, is that proof, doctor, that we're not testing enough? Well, yes. Um, if we, we, as we see the number of positive cases or that test positivity rate increase, it's an indication that the... Um, rate of increase of testing is not quite keeping up with the rate of infections that we are seeing. Um, so if we look at testing over the last week across the country, um, on average we're conducting 35,500 tests per day. Um, and as you mentioned, it, it is up 5% compared to the previous week. Um, but um, the, the, the number of tests that are returning positive results um, is, is the important fact to look out for now. All right, well, let's zoom in on that test positivity rate, as, as we always do. We know a lot of cases are being missed um, when, when it gets high. Explain again what a test positivity rate here of around 10 uh, means. Yes, so, so recall that the test positivity rate is the number of positive tests um, in, uh, as a percentage of the total tests conducted. So really it allows us to quantify that increase in cases that we saw earlier. So while tests have increased uh, by 5% this week compared to a week ago, the number of positive tests has increased even further by 24% as we saw earlier. So this increase in test positivity rate really confirms that the increase in infections is real, um, as we have been seeing for the last few weeks. So the test positivity rate currently across the country stands at 10.6%, um, and that figure is up from just over 8% a week ago. Um, it means that we're finding a positive test for a positive test for every nine to 10 tests conducted. Um, as this test positivity rate continues to increase, um, it also starts to show an indication that there may be more undetected or unreported cases. All right, let's uh, look at the provinces again, the test positivity rate per province and the, the Northern Cape in the lead again. Yeah, so, so looking at this metric of test positivity rate really confirms what we were seeing in the number of cases per province. You'll see all of those trajectories, um, really uh, most of them pointing upwards. Um, so Northern Cape currently is at 25% test positivity rate, really high, meaning that we're finding a positive test for every four tests conducted there. Um, so no doubt many more undetected cases. Um, it's starting to, according to this metric, also leveling off. Um, so hopefully, as we saw with cases, we'll see this, this indicator um, start to, to go down. Um, the free state in the northwest are at test positivity rates above 15%, um, and Gauteng and Pumalanga are above 10%. All of those are really a concern. Remember, uh, below 5% is safe, between 5 and 10% is a worry, and above 10% really is a concern. Um, Limpopo is moving up towards that 10% level. Um, and then Western Cape, over the, the last week, uh, the test positivity rate has drifted above the 5% level too. All right, as you always point out now, the infections go up, then the hospitalizations go up, and, and then we see an increase in uh, the deaths, unfortunately. Let's start with hospitals. Are they under uh, any sort of pressure yet? So uh, I don't think they're quite under the same pressures that we were seeing during the surge of the second wave. Um, However, I do think in the free state, there, there, there certainly is um, the, the most pressure on, on the provinces, um, on the hospitals in that province. Um, so nationally, the number of new admissions last week was just over 3,200, um, up 17 percent compared to the previous week. Um, if we then look at the individual provinces, free state um, admissions have been increasing for at least five weeks um, in line with the increasing uh, 
uh, trend in cases that we saw. Um, however, that increase has slowed a bit. Um, so new hospitalizations up by 4% uh, in that province. Um, Gauteng really continues to, to, to contribute most again to the number of total hospital admissions across the country. It is the most populous province um, and the highest burdens pro burden province, so not, not really uh, surprising. Um, hospitalizations, they have increased by 38% compared to a week ago um, in the Northwest and in the Western Cape. Hospital, hospital admissions are up by 15%. Um, the, the Northern Cape year, the indicator is that hospital admissions is starting to show a decrease as well. So yet another indication possibly um, of Northern Cape having passed its peak. Again, too soon, we'll, we'll wait another week at least to confirm that. Um, okay. And finally, Pumalanga and Lipopo showing slight signs of an increase. If it is confirmed in the Northern Cape, I mean, that's interesting that the Northern Cape may have already... Uh, peaked come out of the the third wave even before the the whole of south africa enters a, a third wave officially uh, finally doctor let's look at the deaths so only up slightly um but i guess unfortunately that that looks set to change that's quite correct. So number of deaths across the country are up to 87 per day. Um, and that's um, about a 4% increase compared to a week ago. So so not too too different compared to last week. Um, but uh, I think the, the thing to point out though is many provinces are undergoing data verification. And so a number of deaths reported maybe from previous weeks or even months prior, making it a bit difficult to read too much into this indicator right now. Um, that being said, Kauteng is certainly showing signs of an increase in the number of deaths. Um, and as you as you point out, we'll likely see this um, continue and, and uh, unfortunately possibly increase as we saw um, more people being admitted into hospitals of yeah. late. All right, Doctor, thank you for bringing us those graphs. Before we let you go, I mean, just your opinion quickly. Uh, does this picture uh, graphically of, of the stats suggest to you that we do need um, some stricter lockdown, uh, so, some more restrictions, that that's what the president may announce tonight? So I think if we look at where we're at in terms of the epidemiological trajectory, and then if we look at what tools we have available in our public health response toolbox, um, there are probably th three things that are quite important at this stage. Um, I think the first is to uh, really focus on limiting super spreading events. So certainly limiting gatherings and in particular limiting indoor gatherings where ventilation may be poor and the risk may be higher. Um, so I think that needs to be the primary focus so that we slow down and limit, slow down transmission and limit opportunities for, for, for super spreader events and cluster outbreaks. Um, beyond that, I think possibly an increase in the alert level um, would go a long way in raising awareness that the risk has increased. I think a lot of us um, probably use the, the, the national level as an indication of our behavior. And so moving that up would signal that we probably need to adjust our behavior uh, now that the risk has increased. Um, and then the third and final consideration, I think, at this point is to monitor hospital uh, facility readiness um, and bed capacity in those provinces that are seeing a surge to ensure that we have the, the available capacity and people get the best access to healthcare facilities right now. I think those three things should be the focus at this stage of the trajectory. All right, thank you uh, for that uh, look at the graphs, for your opinion and for giving us your time tonight. That was Dr. Ridwan Suleiman, a CSIR senior researcher.